Finally. Finally. What a long, stressful game, but we did it, guys. What's going on, guys? If you want to support our content and pick up this month's amazing Patreon rewards, you can do so at patreon.com slash it resolves. If you're interested in custom playmats and sleeves, visit yourplaymat.com and use code itresolves 10 yp for 10% off your entire purchase. Alright, what is going on everybody and welcome back to another gameplay video. I hope you guys are doing exceptionally well today. Hope you guys are having a good week as well, but we are going to be jumping into um, a bit of a janky as for reanimator list that I've been kind of cultivating, kind of working on over the last couple days. Uh, I'm not sold that it's a good deck by any means. Uh, however, I do think it's a nice teched out list that I'd like to give a shot to um, and just see how we can do in, in practice. Haven't been doing too bad, um, and I do think it's well set up, like I said, to, to kind of deal with a lot of different strategies. So we'll talk our way through this very quickly. So uh, the the ways in which we reanimate something uh, are twofold. So the first, uh, or, well, excuse me, threefold. So the first is with Junji. Uh, this is a great way to throw out a creature on five. Uh, if it dies, you get one of two options, either discarding some of the opponent's resources or bringing something, a non-dragon, back from your graveyard. Uh, and that non-dragon non, uh, creature is Jenga Taxis. So Jenga Taxis, on the flip side, does uh, shut down a lot of what the opponent's doing. It also helps a lot of what we're doing. So if we double up on things like Faithful Mending... Um, gain a little extra life draw a couple extra cards yeah we have to discard some cards but again that's kind of the point uh and so that's actually fine we've got memory deluge we can double up on even things like vanishing verse uh allow us to kind of double up on some of these spells and start making them you know nice little two for ones right off the bat uh and so jenga taxis is definitely a good inclusion here in my opinion um we do have a number of sweepers to help us get to the late game so we've got two doom scar more importantly though, and one of the other reanimator spells is Blood on the Snow. So we do have the full four here and you'll notice uh, we've got a ton of snow lands here. A uh, lot of tap lands in this deck, which I'm not super stoked about, but uh, Blood on the Snow really does help us out here because we can get the Junji back. We can even get Jenga Taxis back if we have enough. Uh, and so that does give us some options. I do have two Farewells here as well. Uh, importantly though, uh, the reason I have Farewell in the deck is because, you know, if we are at a point against like Naya Runes where we need a big red button to save ourselves, uh, Farewell is a great option. It exiles everything. Uh, and essentially, we get to choose which of those things we'd like to exile. And so we can make that decision at that time uh, and ensure that they're not going to be able to Runeforge Champion and get some of their runes back and then continue back into the same game plan and rebuild. So. Farewell really does help there. Uh, I didn't want it as the full four because it is an expensive card and it doesn't put anything onto the battlefield uh, like Blood on the Snow, and so we do have it as a two of, but that does make a total of eight sweepers in the list, which is a lot of sweepers, let me be clear. Uh, but I do think it's important. For some disruption, we do have the Jawari disruption, the Fading Hope, and a couple of Saw It coming here, uh, as well as the Vanishing Verse, of course. Um, you'll notice we do have two Valkies as well. Uh, kind of just a card I'm trying out. Let me just be clear. This is not necessarily a great fit for the deck, uh, but it's truly just for the Tibalt side of this. So thinking of this as like a seven drop, uh, we do have the Celestis to help play it. We do have a one of uh, Volatile Fjord uh, to help us cast that red source here. It is only, you know, a two of in the deck, so I'm not dedicating a lot of land uh, to it, but it is a nice little card. Uh, King Narfi's Betrayal is the other kind of reanimator option for us, but it's cool because we can actually take things from the opponent's deck. Uh, and so you mill four cards, then you may exile a creature or Planeswalker card from each graveyard, and then of course play them uh, with uh, stages two and three. So really curious to see how that goes. The Celestis does allow us a little bit of life gain and some card looting, which is great. Uh, and then of course, Memory Deluge, like I said, just gonna get us further into the deck. We do have a pretty high land count. Uh, so we've got 25 lands plus the two Jawari Disruption, all of which uh, really smooths out the mana in this deck. Because we've got so many tapped lands, we really need to be hitting on uh, Curve. And so that really guarantees that, you know, at least to some extent that we should be able to do that. So we'll give it a shot, guys. I'm, again, not sold on this. This is just a little pet deck that I've been playing with. 
uh, and hopefully we can have some fun with. Uh, I do think it's a pretty cool deck when it works. So let's jump into it. Let's see how the games go. Hopefully we can get some wins and have some fun. All right, guys. And here we are for game number one. Uh, and yeah, I mean, this is a keep. It's not exactly ideal, um, but it is certainly a keep. And uh, hopefully we can get a couple black sources here for the Junji. We do have one of the pathway lands. That's actually a really good draw. We can hit the double white off of the pathway here and not have to use the Grim Climb pathway. Uh, like I said, land is definitely something that we have to keep in mind how we're going to play every little detail of this deck. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and foretell this. We don't have to rush on the Faithful Mending. Uh, we can play it anytime, anywhere we need to not a bad draw um yeah so i think with that we just drop down the celestis hope they don't counter they very easily could and that's okay uh this could also be like a rogues build or something um with the dismal backwater though it kind of makes me lean in towards like control uh just because tapped lands in a rogues deck isn't exactly ideal um but you never know looks like they're deciding if they want to counter this uh i would suggest you do i suppose um but it looks like they're just gonna let it happen it's fine by me it's not the big like game ending card but it enables quite a bit uh and for us obviously that red mana is important that we're able to get off of it and so it's just something to think about i would love to take that action okay so we just discard the celestis because we don't need to uh we can go ahead and play this now the question is, do we run Junji out here fully expecting that they've got a counter spell? I do think we can because we've got blood on the snow. The hope is that they don't have a uh, exile counter, which I don't know that they could, but it just as an option. I'm sure it's just a saw it coming or something like that. But if this sticks, this is definitely a threat that they are going to have to deal with. Okay, they have a wash away, sure. Okay, but again, crucially, we have blood on the snow, and so at some point, we can just bring that back. Um, I fully expect that they have... Oh, nice! Okay, so this does exile the card from the graveyard. That is a bit frustrating, but uh, let's see what we can do. So we're already playing around Jwari Disruption. I think we just go for the Doom Scar. This is not a card we want on the field for very long. I fully expect this is a solid coming a test of talents okay uh yeah thankfully again we have spread out our sweepers quite well and so the reality is this is only a two card hit test of talents is a very annoying card uh and certainly one that you know we really don't want to be running up against but uh we do have outs and so that's again kind of the key behind this deck is that we hopefully will have outs for most things um sure uh, don't love the fact that they can exile basically anything they want. That's a little annoying. Uh, so I think we do this, and then I think we just Faithful Mending. Um, we could have done it that, you know, at the end of that turn or something, but I don't think we really need to. If they want to counter a Faithful Mending, that's perfectly fine. I also don't want to give them the exile target here. So let's see if they've got any post-combat plays. They very well may not. Okay, it looks like they do. Uh, again, this is part of why it's so important to wait until the end of their turn to do things. Is because they can exile cards from our graveyard, but right now they have no cards to exile. So at the very least, we can get two activations out of this if need be. Interesting. Uh, so we do have to discard two cards here. I think Fading Hope is definitely one of them. I think it might honestly just be the Glacial Floodplain as well. Interesting. Okay. Um, so let's do this. So we can just shoot for the Blood on the Snow, uh, which would kill two of their things, but I fully expect this is a counter. Um, alternatively, we can try and fill up our graveyard a little bit here. Um... I'm going to try for this. We'll see if this gets countered. Uh, this is more of a bait and switch maneuver than anything else. I just want to see what they're going to do here. Um, okay. So they do allow this to happen. Uh, so we get to take that and we don't have anything. But that's okay-ish. 
Um, I'm gonna go this route. I'm just gonna keep setting up as much as we can, and then next turn, I think Blood on the Snow is definitely gonna be the play. But this does allow us to get some stuff out of the graveyard here. Wow, we didn't hit anything. <laughs> uh, all right. On the bright side, what we did get to do is uh, flip some things here, which is really helpful, honestly. So um, these are now doing a little bit less damage and slowing them down, I think, is definitely a key. We really only got one hit off of both of these, which is a little annoying, um, but that's fine. This is definitely one of the harder decks to beat, by the way. One of the decks that I found in practice was very difficult was just the discard deck um, because of go blank and things like that where they just exile your graveyard. Uh, obviously, that's a little bit frustrating. Um, and so you really have to get lucky with the betrayals here. Um, but that being said, uh, I do think we have some options, so we'll see. All right, so they are smart and try and go for the uh, Emery Deluge as well as the blood on the snow, which is fine. Um, I'm actually going to decline here. So I fully expect that we're running straight into a counter here. Um, but I think we just have to try. It's not going to be super pretty if they do have a counter, but I don't think we have a better option. So we're going to have to burn it. Um, this is definitely a solid coming if I had to guess. Yep. Wow, they have two. I'm sure they have two. Uh, that's really bad. So I don't think there's much we're going to be able to do here then. They're just going to be able to swing in and deal all the damage in the world. This is just a counter heavy deck. Uh, and unfortunately, because we're mixing the control elements with the reanimator elements, we don't have as much interaction and as much stuff we can fight over, uh, which is okay. I mean, I think that's just the deck and the nature of what we happen to be against this time. Um, and that's fine, but we'll, uh, we'll see what we can do here. This deck is much more suited to deal with a lot of the, I'll say expected matchups. And what I mean by that are like the Naya runes deck and things like that. Because we've got so many sweepers and so many options to kill, um, we generally do okay against those decks. But uh, hopefully we'll see that. All right. So, I mean, there's not much else we can do. Uh, we could, I guess, try and make it day or night. Uh, and we can do that still, but... We'll just go ahead and do this. It does flip these, which is fine, but I mean, we're dead this turn, so uh, I guess we gain a life. <laughs> so technically, uh, I'm going to decline. Yeah, I mean, there's not a lot we can have here, guys, unfortunately. Um, they're going to Infernal Grass. I'm going to go ahead and concede here. We did have another turn, but I highly doubt it's really going to matter. So let's go ahead. Let's jump into a game two. I don't want to waste too much time with that. All right, guys, here we are for game number two. Uh, and how do we feel about this? This is an interesting one. So any land helps us, but we do have a lot of tapped lands. So we do need to keep that in mind. Um, but we do have a blood on the snow and we do have a Junji to ramp into. Uh, we'll try it. This is why we lose a lot of games, by the way, is because I try stupid hands like this. <laughs> this is not a good keep, in my opinion. Um, we don't have white mana. We do have, we don't really have any uh, white spells to cast, but we do have plenty in the deck. Uh, and so like a doom scarf is not good in this hand. Um, so we've got a lot of bad draws is essentially the problem, but it's fine. We'll try it. We're here to have some fun. Uh, like I said, guys, this deck is an interesting one. Yep, there we are. <laughs> Uh, that's the problem. Um, and there's the problem again. All right, cool. Uh, the good news is we do have a lot of lands in the deck, as I mentioned. And so theoretically, we could draw out of this. Um, but we're not doing great. <laughs> uh, the other good side of a reanimator list is that you can discard. Oh, come on. Uh, yep, here we go. Here we go. It's fine. Uh, because we can discard, like, our reanimator targets, though, it's not the end of the world, but we're, we're gonna be in bad shape here, there's no doubt about it. An untapped land would be great. Cool. 
<laughs> Do you ever like start a game and you're just like, man, I made a mistake right off the bat? Happens a lot. <laughs> okay, untapped lands. Um, so what's the worry here? Do we just leave up the saw it coming? No, I think we do this. Because we do have sweepers we need to get to, and we do have mana that would solve problems if they happen to have some stuff here, so we'll just do the best we can. <laughs> I don't know, guys. This is a mistake. The only good news is they are so far just ramping. Um, but I'm curious to know what they're ramping into. It is a world tree deck, so... Okay. So they do have white. Oh, they've got... Well, that's a super annoying play um black just because all right cool um i mean we have farewell in hand <laughs> not that it i thought we'd really want to use it on just a binding but like still i don't know okay uh land is good <laughs> land's really good all right so i think we faithful mending saw it coming I think that's probably just the best play. Faithful Mending really good at drawing us into some more lands, though, so that could be really helpful. Um, yeah. That's fine. I don't think that's what we counter. You know what I mean? Like, I think we just leave up the solid coming and counter something else. I will go ahead and Faithful Mending, though. Please just draw me a land. <laughs> Okay, two lands. That's helpful. Uh, what do we get rid of? Might be Vanishing Burst. Might be... I don't really want to get rid of Blood on the Snow. That's the only problem. Could be the Betrayal, but I kind of want to do that next turn. Hmm. This is a tricky place to be. Yeah, I'm going to do the Betrayal here. And is good. Um, okay. So we can drop this for black. That gives us some options. Alternatively, we can floodplain, leave up faithful mending, or saw it coming. Uh yeah, I think I'm gonna do that. I do expect that they've got more of these kinds of things, so I'm just trying to stall the game a little bit. I'm not trying to worry about winning the game right now. Uh, so they just keep getting to learn, which is fine. But like, I'm curious as to what this deck is. I have not seen this deck. Um, it's five color junk. Could be brilliant restoration. Um, that would make a lot of sense. Sure. Thankfully, I don't really care that they have a mascot exhibition. We have answers to that. Let's go ahead and Faithful Mending. Maybe they have a counter. Maybe they don't. Doesn't really matter. Yeah. Okay. So they, this has to be some kind of restoration deck, I imagine. Um, all right. So let's go ahead and do this. We're opening up the turn for them, so I mean, what this amounts to is if they they have something, they're probably going to play it this turn. However, what we what we set up for next turn uh, is the blood on the snow play, where this dies, we get Jenka Taxis back, and then all of their first instants and sorceries through the turn get countered, and we get to double up on ours. Alternatively, they're just going to Sky Turtle it, uh, which is annoying, but fine. Okay. Um, interesting. So. Yeah, I mean, I think the play is pretty straightforward here. We just do the same thing. Again, they're, they're doing a lot, but it's all in favor of themselves. Like, they're not doing anything to damage us. They've done nothing to us, really. Uh, except tempo us down. Which is, like, good and all, but... Okay. Um, yeah, so we get Jenga Taxis. Again, this is part of why 
Jun Junji is just so good. Okay, so they do counter the ability. That's annoying, but that's fine. So I think we just play the other get Jenga taxes. So this does shut down a, a good bit, at least, theoretically. Um, obviously, this is an enchantment-focused deck, though. So one thing to keep in mind is that they, if they just have more bindings, they can kill the Jenga taxes. The good news is uh, we can farewell this, or a vanishing verse. Honestly, that might—that's definitely more efficient. So we counter this, and then if they've got another play, uh, they get to land it. Which is annoying, but fine. So they could give this haste. Is that their play, or is this a, a fight spell? Okay, cool. It's a weird, really weird deck. The Vision of the Unspeakable is not a card I usually expect, but that's fine. I mean, I think the play is clear. I'm just going to do this. If they have a, a response, we have Solid coming up. So. Cool. We did it. <laughs> uh, I have to imagine there's a brilliant restoration in their deck somewhere. Um, which I really hope they go for this turn. Uh, I don't care about that. We've got blood on the snow. So that's fine. Yeah, I mean, I think we just do the thing. All right, so this gets back Junji, um, which is great. One thing to note, I should have mentioned this in the deck tech. Uh, we can't just get Jenga Taxis with Blood on the Snow because the mana doesn't align. Um, so we can't pay seven for a Blood on the Snow. It's just not how it works. Um, all right, cool. I'm super intrigued about this deck. It's a weird one, but I'm kind of into it. Uh, if they try and kill Junji, we let that happen. Um, if it's an exile effect, that's a little annoying, but... Uh, yeah. I think we just let this happen. So here's the thing. They can keep things going, um, but if we have inevitability. Whereas they might think they do, but we got counters, and while they have crab, which is an annoying one, it's not a great option. Uh, yeah, that's cool. And again, we have uh, farewell, which will eventually just exile everything if we want. So we can just play Junji uh, and foretell a saw it coming. Alternatively, we can go ahead and farewell exiling like their graveyard and everything. Which I kind of like that play. I'm just going to do this. This isn't exactly like amazing by any means, but it does stop them from being able to reset. We do lose our graveyard to do it, but I mean, I think it's okay. They're now down to just four cards. Like, they can't just replay crap from their graveyard anymore. Okay. So it's just a 2-3 flyer at the end of the day. That's fine. We did lose our sweepers to do this, though. So maybe that was incorrect. I don't know. It's cool. We'll figure it out. I'm going to play Junji. No reason not to. Everything else is instant speed, so we can do it whenever we see the need. Uh, and we basically just have to hope they don't have an answer in the... The small amount of cards they have in their hand or if they uh, basically we have to hope they don't have two answers really because we can't just easy easy option here uh so we're using that saw it coming so we can faithful mending as well uh this saw it coming would be nice to keep the other one up but i think doubling up on the spells is more important So I'm going to go ahead and Faithful Mending. We do have to discard two cards here, and I think it's that and that. All right. So they are going to kill Junji. We're going to get two cards out of their hand to do it, um, which is great. And we've got a backup Junji now. <laughs> 
Uh, yeah. I'm just gonna keep playing the threat. Um, I think we just pass here again, leaving up that solid coming. I don't know what they could have here, but I'd rather not have to worry too much about it. Um, I'm wondering if eventually they just deck themselves. I mean, I'm sure they've got other Kami Wars, I would imagine, right? The question is, how many Kami Wars? This is an interesting game. Okay, yeah. This is great, so... You just counter it. <laughs> cool, you did it. Um, blood on the snow, huh? That's interesting. Um... So first things first, I am just going to start attacking in. Um, what we could do is blood on the snow, get rid of everything in their hands, and then get Junji back. Uh, what does that leave us available? Just a faithful mending? Or a Celestis? You know, honestly, I'm going to go for it. I want them in top deck mode. This is not a deck I want them to be able to... I don't want them to be able to play multiple spells a turn. Um, so let's get that out of hand. Um, yeah, and I'm just going to play the Celestis. This long term gives us quite a bit of value. And this game is certainly in the long term. So, uh, yeah. So basically, we're just trying to brick them off the top of their deck here. The only downside is they played a lot of bindings. And so they're able to pull back a lot of lands out of their deck and so they may have like deck thinned enough where they're not that worried about anything but we do have both of well mostly memory deluge to uh rebuild a little bit here and hopefully that's enough opponent looks a little upset potentially even they're not doing anything again this is the i think the power level of the deck that we've put together here though is simply again not saying it's a great deck but the power of it is that it seems at least to be fairly well tooled out for whatever the matchup tends to be now obviously in game one we just got overrun and that's really unfortunate however um i do think we are we we have a good matchup against a lot of things um i would absolutely love it to bolt right now that would be amazing uh, but yeah, it looks like the opponent's just kind of pissed off, and so <laughs> here we are. Anyway, guys, uh, I just want to say this is probably only going to be a two-gamer, but uh, I really do appreciate all of the support lately on the channel. It's been absolutely phenomenal. You guys are amazing, uh, and thank you so much for watching. It's an absolute pleasure to have you here. If you're not entered for the giveaway, uh, we are doing a Streets of New Capenna draft booster box giveaway, uh, and so if you're watching till this point and you happen to not be subscribed, please make sure you do. Uh, it's a great way to support, but it's also a great way to get your hands on some free cards. So definitely check that out. But yeah, um, also collection update. Uh, I've really enjoyed the collection update series. That's one thing that um, I think is just really, really fun to do. Uh, and so it's a great option for you guys if you want to follow along with me, hang out with me and enjoy some, some really cool, uh, interesting, really cool, um, new cards added to the collection we're doing that every week and it's just a blast honestly all right um <laughs> i think it's definitely farewell um what else might be blood on the snow um i'm not gonna pull the trigger on either of these anytime soon most likely but the the beauty of this is that now again we're just really well set up to do whatever we need to do. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and do this now. Oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. All right. We've now tooled out our hand, uh, and they are at one card in hand. So let's hope they can't do too much. Um, that was really good. That was really, really good. <laughs> if we could get Tabalt to exile all graveyards, like, oh, we just get to do everything. <laughs> we could play the Kami War and blow up everything. That would be amazing. Um, again, the, the win conditions of this deck are really fun. Uh, the Junji just replayability with Junji is so ridiculous. Having the Valky is so fun too, because again, in this situation, it breaks a stall position so well 
because it's basically like drawing extra cards every uh, i mean you exile a couple cards and you just get extra stuff um so i'm super stoked about that um they do have 28 cards and we have 27 worth noting but i i think it's not gonna get to that um we do have the betrayal as well so if we'd like we can you know pull that trigger but the opponent seems to just be a little upset since they are uh, doing their thing. I do really love making people upset. It's fun. <laughs> oh, goodness, guys. Long video. There's only two games. This is ridiculous. Uh, look at look at these little rose petals. I never really stopped to, to appreciate, you know? It's just so lovely. So nice. Yeah, the opponent's really upset. Okay. <laughs> sure. Uh, we'll do this. I think the play is definitely to vault, right? Oh. Yeah, I think it's to vault. Why not? Um, let's do it. Wandrix command, huh? We shouldn't have played a land yet. Um, Target not creature, counter target artifact or enchantment spell. Okay. What do we have in our graveyard? It's gonna end the turn. So we can play this at any time. That's really sick. Um, yeah. So if they have an enchantment spell, we just counter it. <laughs> yeah, I'd love to take the turn. <clears throat> Um, I'm gonna decline. I don't particularly want to draw too much further into the deck. We've kind of got everything we need. <laughs> oh, beautiful. <laughs> uh, really appreciate. Yeah, let's, let's just do this. <laughs> cool. Uh, we'll get that off the field just for the fun of it, I guess. Um, play land. And you know, I really don't feel like we have to rush. <laughs> um, again, if they play a, an artifact or enchantment, we just get to exile it. Finally. Finally. What a long, stressful game, but we did it, guys. That was a heck of a game. That was really, really fun. Well, I know it's only been two. Let's talk about this deck, though. It's been over 30 minutes at this point, so let's chat about it. All right, guys, so we got a win and we got a loss, but uh, in general, I still really love this deck. I think it's a fun one. I want to keep playing with it, tool it out a little bit, maybe smooth out the mana. Um, we didn't really see it uh, as much as I thought. We didn't really think it was uh, see it be that big of an issue uh, in these games. Even in the second game where we were like kind of mana screwed for a little while, we kind of dug ourselves back out and obviously we came back to win. And so um, I really enjoy this. I feel like it's really well tooled out. It's got everything you need uh, main decked and you're able to steal stuff from the opponent. Uh, and so you can kind of steal their game plan a little bit and do the things you need to do to, to find the win. Um, all that to say, it's not a perfect deck. And so I want to give you guys the opportunity to take a peek at this deck, see what you can do. I know there's other like Esper reanimator lists out there. Uh, and so I, I'm interested to see, you know, how this compares to those. Is it as good? Probably not, but it's kind of fun to see, you know, what we can do. So all in all, guys, I really enjoyed this one. I hope you guys did. I really do appreciate you all joining me today. Thank you so much. Have a fantastic day. Don't forget to enter the giveaway and don't forget to stay tuned for the collection updates every Saturday. They're an absolute blast. So thank you guys again. I'll see you soon.